Hi, this is Norman Go. You're listening to BMI Bicara Minggu Ini. We're back in another lockdown as we usher in a new year in 2021. And despite the good news of the rollout of COVID-19 vaccine, we will still have to brace ourselves with a new wave of infections in Malaysia that broke 4,000 mark in daily new cases. Last year, millions of students had to stay home during early measures of lockdown in the country. Classes only resumed in June, but later the schools were ordered to close again in November 2020. Nevertheless, some students and teachers have gotten used with the home-based learning via online platforms. But what about students from low-income families who cannot afford to have any devices or internet services at home? What about students in the remote areas in Malaysia? This will be the first part of my conversation and discussion on Children of the Lost Year as part of my policy analysis and my attempt to understand the current situation of our education policy in the midst of the pandemic. In this episode, I speak to the ed- former Education Minister and Simparangam MP Dr. Mazim Malik to share his views on this matter. Uh, thank you very much for joining me in this uh, very short interview. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mazim Malik. And we will look at it. We look at the current situation. Uh, you know, last year students in Malaysia only had 123 days of school out of 193 days. Looking at physical school, uh, physical classes, where just 60 percent of the days in school. So over the year, what is your opinion about the the policies by the education ministry and measures taken by education ministry in making sure that students will not be left out from the studies? So at the moment, I think apart from uh, closing and opening the schools, uh, I didn't see much being done by the ministry in the previous months. In fact, uh, what we can see was uh, they were initiating something, not saying that they didn't do anything. I mean, uh, they, 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 they did encourage teachers to do online classes and luckily, uh, during my time, we, we are asking teachers to use Google Classroom and they benefited a lot from it. But again, that did not solve the problem because most of the students, uh, I think more than uh, 60% of the students uh, have, uh, have no devices of, of their own and have difficulty with uh, internet connectivity. So that impede the, the process of online learning as well. Apart from that, uh, uh, they... The minister also came up with the TV Pendidikan Initiative, in mm-hmm. which two hours have been uh, allocated in uh, TV OK, RTM OK, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for certain uh, levels, uh, but not for all levels. Uh, but again, uh, in compared to other countries and compared to all those proposals and advisors and uh, commands given by WHO, World Bank, UNESCO, and other agencies, uh, we are not really doing that much in accordance to uh, whatever being suggested by those uh, international uh, agencies. And if you try to compare between uh, what has been done by Malaysia in compared to other developed countries uh, like Japan, like uh, our neighbor Singapore, uh, Taiwan, or maybe it's, it's not too much if we compare ourselves to uh, New Zealand, for example. Uh, they have their own way in dealing with, uh, with schools and with the students. I'm not talking about internet connectivity. I'm talking about uh, how they decide how they decided it on on uh, opening and closing schools and how they run their their schools. Uh, with the stringent but very organized SOPs. And apart from that, we try to compare our TV Pendidikan to other countries. I mean, we're like behind compared to Thailand and even to Indonesia in that case. And what more, we try to compare ourselves with uh, Turkey, in which they have dedicated more uh, hours for, for education at their mainstream media, uh, sorry, at their mainstream TV channels. And not only the television, but some of those countries also activated their radio stations, uh, uh, which dedicated for education. Uh, we didn't do much, uh, to be honest with you. And mm-hmm. the reading campaign was not uh, being encouraged and was not enhanced. 
when it's supposed to be uh, activated uh, during the past few months. And in fact, now we, we should have learned something and we should have uh, doing better at the moment because we are we are within the period of uh, MCO 2.0. But again, we couldn't see anywhere the reading campaign being activated or being mm. enhanced by the current ministry. But we've also seen, like, for example, you mentioned a few countries like Singapore, New Zealand. Like Singapore, uh, starting January 1st, has rolled out. It, the last year during parliament, they actually passed a budget to roll out uh, one student per laptop. Uh, and then starting journey, they've been issuing out all laptops. Um, but this is not new. In Australia, they started about 15 years ago, one student, one laptop, one device uh, for, for their, on, their in-class learning and all that. But we also see it very interestingly, even Somalia and Timor-Leste has been taking a more proactive role than Malaysia. Uh, they recognize that there are certain issues in their country where internet penetration is very low, while Malaysia is oversubscribed when it comes to internet. But uh, we are not addressing some of the students who have no internet connection at home. And do they yeah. do, it, do it, only 36% of the students have uh, do not have any devices. But again, that, this, that, yeah. that, 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 that is mm. beyond the Ministry of Education. Correct, because uh, it requires that, that, uh, Ministry of Education yeah. as well as Communications Ministry to come together. Uh, but KPLB, we, we, the, local, yes. the local authorities, and yes. KPKT in that mm. sense. But in, in, in essence, if you're talking about education, it is not the sole responsibility of Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to education, I think every, all uh, ministries should uh, get involved in doing their part and playing their role, like internet connectivity. You have mentioned earlier, Kementerian uh, Komunikasi, for example, Kementerian Luar Banda, KPKT, uh, all the local authorities, they should get involved. And, you know, one thing, uh, when we're talking about uh, internet connectivities, even add-ons, all add-ons and all parliamentarians uh, should be given some kind of uh, education when it comes to education that they could dedicate it to their constituents, regardless whether they are government MPs or government add-ons or opposition add-ons or opposition MPs. Yeah. Mm. You know, we've seen it right now, MCO 2.0 has been imposed uh, for two weeks' time, maybe for a longer time. And among the poorest uh, in in one of the constituencies I'm looking at is uh, Taling Jaya. And uh, there, were about, there are about 10,000 people living in Lembah Subang, uh, low-cost flats. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot more low-cost flats around. So you're in Simpang Rangam in Johor. Uh, can you share about your experiences uh, working with uh, B40 families, the children from secondary and primary schools in these low cost areas? What were your, your, uh, your, some of the activities or measures that you have done? Uh, as a, as a non-government MP <laughs> or opposition MP, and what more, I'm an independent MP. I'm a, uh, Maybe my situation is a bit different from others. But again, we are doing the whatever we can do for the benefit of the people. So at the moment, uh, we know that uh, most of our students in my constituency have uh, little, uh, have poor access to internet connectivity. And some of them, they don't have devices and you know those type of situations. So what I did was, First and foremost, I turned my service center or my Pusat Khidmat uh, Rakyat, Pusat Khidmat Parliament, into a learning center in which they can come and, and, and study there because the, 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 the Wi-Fi is free, the internet is, is free, and we provide for them uh, their lunch and snacks and whatnot. Uh, and we dedicated uh, special uh, spaces for them with strict SOP. Uh, but again, not everybody can come to my office. There are a lot of children, there are a lot of families living uh, a bit distance from uh, the, the town of Simpanrangam. So what we did was we are working closely with the Ketua Kampung. Now they are former Ketua Kampung. Lah. They were Ketua Kampung during our days. Uh, but uh, since the 31st of December, there are no more the Ketua Kampung. So what we did was we are giving uh, to each Ketua Kampung a rotor. Uh, and they and, and we give some uh, internet subscription to those Ketukampung who need that. So they're using their house as a learning center 
for all those unfortunate families. So the students can come to their house and luckily most of their houses uh, are sufficient uh, for the students. And some of them they're using Balaraya. I'm not sure whether they are still allowed to use the Balaraya anymore since yeah. they are no longer Ketua Kampung. Uh, but some of them they're very creative. They have their own uh, places, if not their house, they have their own, uh, if not their Balaraya, they have their own Dewan or they have, they have their own uh, shop. And they turn it into a learning center in which uh, students from poor family can come and study there. Now for your experience, and also, yeah. And, and, and also we, we are, launching in this near future uh, the campaign Sempang Membaca in which we are distributing to 3,000 students from preschool to standard two. Uh, we, are pro uh, we are giving them free reading materials, activity books, color pencils and whatever they need in order to encourage them to read at home uh, because we believe that uh, when uh, they were not they, they, they were not having the opportunity to go to school for nearly a year. I believe uh, students at that level, at preschooling, standard one, standard two, now this year, uh, did struggle and have a huge problem with reading, writing, counting, and a lot of other stuff. Because that's a very formative level for, for them. And it's very unfortunate they, they miss their classes. And since they're not from fortunate family, family they did not have the opportunity to, to go to tuition classes or getting teachers to come to their house. So what we are doing now is we're trying to provide to 3,000 uh, kids or 3,000 yeah, 3, kids, all these reading materials. And I, I really, uh, and I feel, I feel very grateful to all those donors who has been donating all those books and reading materials to us. I'd like to bring you to one in the uh, studies in UK because you yourself, you have been, you, have been, uh, you know, you pursue your, your postgraduate studies in, in the UK back then. And it's very alarming with, yeah, but it's also very alarming with the outcome of the study in UK have shown that children from the uh, starting early age or uh, going to preschool and also early years in the elementary school have also shown that that sort of uh, they lost the skills, the livelihood skills, even uh, going to toilet. They can't, they can't remember the skills of going to do toilet, potty training. They have forgotten. Uh, they have forgotten how to feed themselves. And then more recently, a couple of days ago, you raised the issue of you know, the, the, your concern about Tiga M, the three M's means reading, writing, and uh, counting. Four M. Yeah, four M's. What's the fourth one again? Mas Manusiawi. Manusiawi, which means values. interrelation values and all that. So uh, in, in view of this, right, what is the, you know, uh, what could, what should be a clear policy? You know, we, we do have the ongoing pandemic, uh, schools have to be shut, at, or schools will have to follow strict SOPs at the end of the day. Like what we have mentioned, one of them is Indonesia. Um, living it, living it with uh, with COVID nineteen. What do you think about that, man? If you ask me, I'm one person. I could give my own opinion, but again, just like I mentioned in the parliament and to the media many times, that uh, we need to have our own uh, majlis tindakan pendidikan kebangsaan akin to majlis tindakan ekonomi kebangsaan, in which we get all the best brains there from government, opposition, from private sectors, educators, experts, the intellect to contribute in, in formulating what is the best plan, what is the best measurement to be taken uh, in the post-pandemic period. Because we are going to have a situation in which uh, we're going to depart from these new norms and definitely we're not going back to the old norms. We're going to the new, new norms. But how that new, new norms is going to be? and how to, you know, how to uh, recover the lost learnings of those lost generation that we had. Uh, I cannot give a silver bullet answer to that. I may have my own opinion, but again, I think it's better to get other opinions as well. And as we know, uh, when, it, when we talk about education, it has, it has many stakeholders and everybody has their own concerns about education. So better for us to have 
that kind of uh, uh, counsel or majlis tindak majlis tindakan pendidikan kebangsaan to get the best brains to get the best experts in in the matter and we engage as much as possible with the stakeholders we have the NUTP we have all this PIBG and NGOs i mean we need to tap their brains and uh, you know when it come to education it should not be politicized it should go beyond politics and it is everybody's concerns it is the future of our nation is the future of our country and we all should be worried about that this is where i think uh, kpm should, should never work alone should never work in silo and should engage and embrace everybody to work together to plan for the best for our country there should be a master plan for that This kind of reminded me of the interview that I had with you for the first time uh, in your home when you were first uh, yeah. appointed as the uh, education minister. You talked about the importance of uh, getting the cooperation from the community level itself, the participation yeah. of community as the main stakeholders uh, of the you know in, in participating in uh, developing the uh, master plan for community schools around that area. So looking into this sort of issue, you know. Um, I'm I'm looking at how these kids, you know, they are they are not being able to follow the classes, and then uh, what do you think? You know, there are some places they have no internet. What are we going to do with them? You can't reach out to them. So what do you think? Man, yeah, I, I I got one one. I, I still uh, remember. One, no. Yeah, yeah, you were saying. I still remember mm. when you said that there's there are certain places which no internet uh, yes. connectivity. Mm. Uh, For example, those who are living in rural and remote places, those living in islands, mm. the the question is why didn't we allow the schools there to be open? It just remind me of certain uh, questions and certain suggestions that have been brought to the parliament by our uh, fellow MPs from Sabah and Sarawak. As I remember, one of the MPs was saying that uh, there are few schools in Sarawak. Which situated uh, just opposite the Rumah Panjang, and to get to the Rumah Panjang, it's not that, that easy. You need two, three, four, five, six hours of journey, and they situated in a green area. <laughs> the same thing happened in Kelantan and Pahang for Skora Orang Asli, and also in, in in Sabah they have few islands which COVID did not reach there, and they are in a green zone. <laughs> Why didn't we allow them? To, to open to, to open the schools to, yeah. to operate so this is where i keep reiterating whether in the parliament or outside the parliament the decision to close and to open the school should be uh, uh well, devolved uh, or should be given uh, to ppd and the schools to decide npibg let them decide because there's uh, they know better about the condition uh, in compared to put those in putrajaya Those in Putrajaya, they, they can make a blanket uh, decision, but again, on the expense of those people, you know, some of those, some of those schools situated just few steps away from the Rumah Panjang, why should we close them? How the children should should go to school? And some some schools they situated, you know, in 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 island that you you need to take. Uh, Uh, three to four hours journey to reach the island, and there's n- not a single COVID-19 uh, case there. So, but I don't know. We, I did suggest that, and I keep opening, uh, giving that uh, opinion. And actually, it's not new. You you look at other developed countries; that they're doing that. They are not giving a blanket, uh, let me say, decision to all the schools. This is still what you have described. It's pretty much a very archaic, uh, top-down approach in policies <laughs> <laughs> by the by the government. Uh, it is still the old ways. They're doing it. Yeah, <laughs> it's still, still the old it. ways. You know, one of the interesting thing when I was uh, researching about the measures taken by other other countries, looking at developing countries, not develop, developing countries, they admit they they have issues with internet connection. What they did was one of the yeah. one of uh, one of the suggestions was aside from opening schools, uh, they also try to reach out to students who are from uh, pretty far that uh, they prepare what they call as a self-directed learning kit. Um, 
where students are still able to continue mm -hmm. to continue the lessons at home with a kit uh, where you don't really need an internet connection after all. They still need a self-directed learning kit uh, supervised by parents or elder brothers or aunties or even community lead leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, those have been in place by uh, countries even Timor-Leste and Somalia. They have done it. Yeah. Uh, in your opinion, should it be done as well in Malaysia? Uh, even like, for example, we have so many content on TV Pendidikan. We have content on Cek Gutiuk, on Sofia, for example. It can be turned into a DVD. Thank uh, you. This, <laughs> you know, it can be turned into DVD and then to be sent uh, to, to uh, Rumah Panjang, to the long houses yep. with a very cheap DVD player, mm -hmm. which costs mm -hmm. less than 200 ringgit. What do you think about that? At yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a brilliant idea. And thank you for promoting Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, uh, man, that's one of the solutions that we, we could think of and is from you. Just imagine if we have that council, more and more creative approach approaches, more and more, and more creative solutions uh, we could come up with. Yes, we have missed that 10 months, but on the expense of how many years ahead. But at least... I really hope that <laughs> the ministry will, will, will start listening to people and will start listening to others when it comes to solution. They, they, they cannot think that they know everything. The top-down solution is not working with the, with the current pandemic situation. And just, just imagine, man, the, the, the example that you, you have given, the kit or whatever, uh, based on the experience of those develop, uh, developing countries, I, I believe if we tap on the best brains to, to, to that council, we get, uh, oh, I mean, we, we engage with more and more stakeholders, we'll get you know, tons of ideas and especially from, 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 from the people. I, I always believe in bottom up uh, solution rather than top down uh, imposed uh, regulations. Yeah. Speaking of bottom-up approach kind of policy, uh, do you think it is far more important uh, looking at the current situation that the government uh, from different ministries should really look into a community-based um, education policy? Uh, because different areas have different needs and different levels, again. Uh, we, uh, in certain areas, you have urban poor, uh, rich and poor divide, and certain areas, they have different needs. Um, do you think it is achievable in, uh, in, in definitely, the Definitely, definitely, man. No, definitely. Like I keep reiterating it and I keep repeating, repeatingly mentioning it in the media, in the parliament, that we need to empower the community. We need to empower the society. We need to empower the schools. We need to empower the teachers. We need to empower the PIBG. We need to empower the local councils, the local authority, and we need to empower the adults uh, to, 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 to solve this issue. Because when, when it comes to education, it's not a sole responsibility of the uh, Ministry of Education. It's the responsibility of every single individual in this country. What more if they have certain authorities I mean, they should, they should be empowered. They should be given, uh, you know, uh, uh, power to to decide on their own. Because just like you mentioned, and I did mention that too, they know best about their own situation, their own local context, mm -hmm. rather than to be decided by those in uh, Putrajaya. Yeah. Moving ahead of another thing, one thing we have also seen uh, the reports uh, by the, edu the current education minister in the last parliamentary sitting in, in October and November, also pointed out there has been an increase of school dropouts post M first MCO, uh, more alarming towards the, um, the secondary school education where we have seen at least 0.12%. Of course, uh, according to the Education Act, uh, it is compulsory for, for, for primary education, but it is not compulsory for a secondary education. Do you think that it is pretty much a bit too, um, it is very important now to make it compulsory for, for, for a secondary education at this time? Man, you're talking about <laughs> secondary education. You just imagine, you, you just imagine what happened to those uh, children with special needs. Mm -hmm. You just imagine those students who 
during our time in 2018 and 2019, we managed to get them back to schools, the undocumented children. In, yes, as in, well in, 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 as well as accepting them in normal schools. It's it's yeah, part of, yeah. yeah, that was part of your 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 policies back then. Yeah, we, we, we tried our best with our zero reject policy to bring mm. them back to schools. And now what I heard from the teachers who got involved uh, in all those uh, efforts, they said now those those kids, those children lost their interest to come to school back again. So it's, it's very pity. And you're talking about uh, a school, about the secondary school. Just imagine, they are a few years away from... <laughs> From uh, uh, from the age of uh, consent, uh, mm-hmm. consent. What will happen to them in the next five years? What will happen to them in the next ten years? And they are going to shape the future of our country. So, I mean, I I, I just don't know what is the direction of the ministry at the moment. It <laughs> don't is... they think seriously about this? Yeah. One of the one of the few things uh, during my observation at Lumba Subang uh, Law Cost Housing is that um, there has been an increase. Uh, there, or, or, there's no clear database of uh, children in law cost uh, housing areas. Um, there's, we, we don't keep database of how these kids are doing, how many are being dropped out. And one of the things that I, I during my observation in the law cost flat is that the students are being exposed to drug pushes. And, and yep. a lot more issues uh, being yeah. dropped out from school. And they, yep. they are facing the problem of the vicious cycle of poverty again, because I, I, I personally think because the only way to eradicate poverty is to provide quality education and true education that the poor can actually break away from the cycle of poverty. So, you know, you have, I remember this, uh, you know, what are, what are the things... Uh, you would suggest in terms of the uh, policy issues the children who are dropped out of school due to pandemic? I think we should. You're talking about the post-pandemic period? Yeah. Post-pandemic. We should uh, be heavily Mm. activating our TVET education Mm. for those children, number one. And number two, we must do a, a, a serious and... Uh, intensive campaigns on getting back this, uh, those students back to school. Schools should be a happier place for them, should be a cool place for them to come back. And, and, and definitely school is the safest place for them from all those uh, you know, ill activities that you have mentioned earlier, just to name some like drugs, gangs and whatnot. And at the moment, I didn't see any serious campaign on getting the students back to school, knowing that more and more students have lost interest to come back to schools. One of the one of the key, uh, the, the next thing I actually wanted to bring up is you have also raised the issues uh, and your concerns about the mental well-being of students in the midst of this pandemic, especially those in the yeah, yeah. Uh, examination year. So, in view of this, uh, what should the education ministry and the government, the whole government approach and the whole society approach to address this uh, this kind of uh, concerns that you brought up? I think just like I mentioned earlier, I would like to reiterate it again. They need to establish the Majlis Tindakan Pendidikan Kebangsaan. We are facing a very uh, dangerous situation, a very unprecedented uh, situation that will uh, have a lot of consequences to the future of our country. If we are not looking at it seriously, if not, if we don't embrace all stakeholders to to think of this thing collectively and seriously, we're in a grave danger. So for me, there's no other solution rather than having that Majlis Tindakan Pendidikan Kebangsaan. So, all right. Thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts on that. You're listening to Bichara Minggu Ini, uncovering current affairs and politics. You can listen to the stories and interviews on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, on iTunes, and anywhere you can find the podcast. For more updates and stories, if you have any suggestions, you can tweet to me at I'm Non-Go. Thank you for listening. <laughs>